the metaverse is a shared virtual space where you have a fully embodied presence, an avatar through whose eyes you see the world, right? You're looking, you're fully immersed in a virtual space, looking out at it, and there are a limited, unlimited number of other participants in this simulation with you. And with other people, you know, with whom you can be remotely present, even when you're separated by great distances or by a pandemic, and you can do things together, you can do sports, play video games, watch TV, and most important, work and learn. And I think it is those aspects that have the potential to be so transformative. The metaverse itself is a theoretical concept being manifested in little pieces here and there. It'll probably take a decade before it comes together. But before it does, there will be unprecedented opportunities for creators, for people who uh, sell goods in the physical world or people who sell goods in the virtual world. And this creator economy uh, will come to be a large part of most of the work that uh, people do uh, on the internet today. I think there is a danger when VR becomes photorealistic in people not being able to tell what's real. And that's escapism and it certainly is a danger, overuse, uh, but there are many other scary things, a dark metaverse, for example, um, having your privacy invaded when you are fully embodied is a very different thing than having somebody try to fish your email account. So the metaverse, uh, if we're not careful, is going to have the same exact problems as the internet. Once upon a time, in 2017, I said, um, film schools that aren't teaching their students to use game engines like Unity and Unreal Engine are committing malpractice. And here I am today teaching Unity and Unreal Engine at a university. Because the jobs of tomorrow are based on those kinds of computing skills. So the most important thing I government can do is understand that this kind of uh, literacy in spatial computing is critical to the jobs of tomorrow. I think the benefit to uh, any country, particularly uh, countries outside of North America and Europe, is that work is becoming internationalized and it is skills for which people are compensated, not fancy degrees, not a social network, but uh, skills with computers. And that's been a trend in the United States. I think it's going to be a worldwide trend. And I think it is good news for the world of work. Companies will become international. They'll be based simultaneously in Dubai and Kazakhstan and the UK and North America. And you will work with people and know them and probably never meet them in the physical world. So the, the metaverse is going to be a, a place where people spend a lot of time for work and for play. And it will be photorealistic and with that, of course, uh, comes a lot of concerns about influence and um, you know the effect of uh, certain kinds of video games so I think it's something that governments need to pay attention to and, and also we have some responsibility as users as well I think the curiosity that you see here is uh, at the moment the most exciting part I think deciding what to do from a policy perspective is complicated, it is local, you have to be mindful of unintended consequences and of the culture uh, that the metaverse is really going to sit on top of. And by the way, we will take that culture with us into these virtual worlds. So virtual worlds in, in Dubai will be very specific. Yet, at the same time, you can be in a virtual world on the other side of the world. In fact, you can even be in the metaverse in places in the real world where you can appear virtually as if you were physically there. This technology is very new and it's just being developed now. So there's a great opportunity as opposed to say internet technology and social media, there's a great opportunity here for uh, governments to get ahead of this a little bit and try to mitigate the negative things and emphasize the positive things. Thank you. My pleasure, thank you.